Hello, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Caney, and I'm a professor of radiology at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health in Madison, Wisconsin, in the United States of America. Today, I'm going to present a thoracic imaging case for you. Our patient is a 63-year-old male with worsening cough and dyspnea. He'd had a chronic cough for three years, as well as a history of chronic sinusitis. He underwent chest CT for further evaluation. And on this coronal reformatted image, we see diffuse bronchial wall thickening, bronchial luminal stenosis, and peribronchial consolidation, particularly in the left upper lobe. There's relative sparing of the imaged portions of the trachea and main bronchi. These two axial images show similar findings with diffuse bilateral bronchial wall thickening, peribronchial consolidation, and luminal narrowing. Note that the peribronchial consolidation has rather irregular margins. The main bronchi, as on the previous image, are relatively spared. The differential diagnosis for our patient includes granulomatosis with polyangiitis, amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, inflammatory bowel disease, relapsing polychondritis, and chronic infections such as tuberculosis. The patient underwent serologic evaluation and was found to have a positive ANCA, as well as a more specific antiproteinase 3 autoantibody. This is highly associated with granulomatosis with polyangiitis. He underwent a bronchoscopy as well, which showed inflamed airways, erythematous mucosa, and areas of stenosis. So our final diagnosis is granulomatosis with polyangiitis. GPA is a small and medium vessel vasculitis that is part of the ANCA-associated vasculitides. It primarily affects the kidneys, the sinuses, and the lungs. Lung involvement most commonly includes lung nodules and masses. These may cavitate. Patients may develop consolidation from hemorrhage or vasculitis itself. Additionally, patients may have co coexistent airways disease or disease isolated to the airways. With GPA, we most commonly see patchy areas of tracheobronchial wall thickening and stenosis. In our patient, we had more unusual in that the involvement was rather extensive uh, with relative sparing of the trachea. The differential diagnosis does include some other entities I mentioned. Amyloidosis, when involving the airways, is usually very diffuse, including the entirety of the trachea and main bronchi. In this case, we had relative sparing of those airways. Additionally, the irregular margins of the peribronchial thickening would be a little unusual for amyloidosis. Inflammatory bowel disease is a rare cause of tracheobronchitis, and our patient had no history of underlying gastrointestinal disease. Relapsing polychondritis can cause diffuse tracheobronchial wall thickening, but characteristically spares the posterior membrane. Additionally, the lack of tracheal and main bronchial involvement in our patient makes RPC very unlikely. One diagnosis we could consider in our patient is sarcoidosis because of the more peripheral uh, bronchial involvement with the and the bilateral and relative symmetry of the involvement. However, with the autoantibodies and the history of sinus disease, that makes sarcoidosis very unlikely. Additionally, the air, very erythematous airways on bronchoscopy would be atypical for sarcoidosis. Finally, we have to consider a chronic infection such as tuberculosis. Tuberculosis can be isolated to one airway or can involve multiple airways, but typically would not give the diffuse involvement we see in this patient. Furthermore, we saw no abnormalities out in lung parenchyma such as nodules or cavities. I hope you enjoyed this case. Thank you for your attention.